Emma Harper. Thank you, Convener. Good morning, everybody. I need to declare first an interest as a former employee of NHS and Free St Galloway, and I know everybody across the table um, this morning, so thanks for coming today. I'm interested in hearing about the new DGRI, the, the planning, the process, the, the settling in. It's been almost a year now. Um, there are obviously challenges with um, running concurrent uh, sites at Mountain Hall as well as the new build. But uh, it's a really good news story that I think we should be sharing that we've got a brand new hospital in, in Dumfries for Dumfries and Galloway. But obviously there were challenges, financial challenges and uh, pressures associated with the move to the new hospital. So I'd like to hear a wee bit about that. Just to, to start, the, the new hospital obviously was eight to ten years in the planning, the development and the delivery, and the planning partnership with Highwood Health was a really successful model for, for us in Dumfries and Galloway, uh, and the way in which we engaged particularly uh, with our staffing groups uh, as we came to the later stages of the hospital having been complete, uh, being prepared and made ready for us to, to take occupancy, uh, we had the HR team uh, that had, did a hugely significant piece of work in familiarisation trips uh, with meetings and discussions with, with small groups uh, so people could understand where they were moving from and what they were moving to uh, because obviously you leave one hospital one day and over the weekend you then start the operation in a, in a new one um, and there was a hugely successful uh, management of change process put in uh, so much so that our HR team um, actually won a national award from the healthcare professional body uh, for HR team of the year for the work that they did on that uh, particular work because the most important thing we recognised was patient safety and patient safety had to be guaranteed through uh, the understanding of the staff who moved as to where they were going, what they were doing because it was a wholly different sort of configuration in the new hospital from the old one. So when people used to walk out of theatre and turn left, it wasn't left anymore. So simple things uh, were made more practical and uh, sort of start ready uh, by the background work. Uh, but I'll let Jeff speak and Julie on some of the detailed uh, aspects of the new hospital. If, if I make me an then I'll hand over to Julie, who was a uh, project lead throughout the, the new build process and uh, delivered um, Scotland's, la at, at the time, NHS Scotland's largest capital project to the day on time and uh, to the pound on budget. We were, we were immensely proud of, of what we achieved. Um, it was far and away the biggest change project we've, we've ever undertaken. We've, we've experienced of building new facilities previously in Stranra and our new uh, mental health unit at, at Dumfries, but nothing on this scale of a complete uh, move and to actually to physically move uh, over 170 patients over the, the uh, weekend in December was the most terrified I've ever been in work and the most proud afterwards of everyone who'd achieved it. It was a, 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 an absolute iconic moment for us. But I'll hand over to Julie, who is the, the single individual most responsible for its success. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, I think in terms of the, the move to the new hospital, as Jeff said, it was the single largest change that any of us had been involved in in terms of the senior management team within NHS and Free St Galloway and indeed across the Health and Social Care Partnership. And we had been planning for the, the move for some eight years, as Jeff said, um, submitting a business case to Scottish Government in April 2013 um, and then successfully moving into the new hospital in December 2017. And I think the time frame from submission of an outlined business case to actually moving into the new hospital is one that's probably not been matched anywhere else in the country. But that work was undertaken, I, I appreciate Jeff's kind comments, but that work was undertaken very much um, as a team. We had an incredibly um, strong team working on the development of the new hospital and much of the success was absolutely down to our clinicians and our clinical teams, our service teams and their engagement with us in developing the plans for the new hospital. 
within the new hospital itself, Emma's asking about some of the changes that have taken place. There have been a whole host of changes um, in relation to um, the way in which we deliver services within the acute hospital. So we've developed something called a combined critical care unit, which brings together what you've traditionally got in intensive care units, surgical high dependency and medical high dependency. And that involved real changes for staff in terms of the way in which they worked and how they worked together as a team. And that team really came together and did a lot of preparation to work before they move to the new hospital. One of the single biggest changes we have in the new hospital is something called our new emergency care centre. And the emergency care centre houses our A&E department, our GP out of hour service and our combined assessment unit. And our combined assessment unit is the unit where our, our patients um, access, um, emergency admissions access that for rapid assessment and diagnosis of their condition with the expectation that we'll turn around those as many of those patients as possible back into the community. Um, and we found that on the in the first sort of six to nine months of operation within the new hospital, our combined assessment unit has turned around 41% of our GP admissions straight back home and um, within about a 12 hour period with the remaining um, individuals going on into our downstream wards. But again, that, that level of change with a combined assessment unit and emergency care centre required a huge amount of planning and a huge amount of investment of time of our clinical teams and working about how and looking at how we were going to work differently to better meet the needs of our population. This was about us having an assessment unit, not an admissions unit. So it's about people coming to the hospital for a rapid assessment and diagnosis and wherever possible, us then supporting them to go back home. We also, within the new hospital, we, we say we are the most digitally enabled hospital in Scotland. It was one of the key factors in developing our new hospital. So our new hospital has Wi-Fi throughout the new hospital. The Wi-Fi also supports the telephone system and it supports our telemetry system, which supports our, our sickest patients within the hospital. We've also introduced electronic patient records, an electronic prescribing system and an electronic ordering system for diagnostic tests. We have also introduced a range of um, technology, um, a roaming desktop in our wards, which means that our clinicians within the single patient bedrooms can access the patient information within the patient bedroom, within the roaming desktops. So we're very, very proud of the technology that we have within the new hospital. The, one of the key features of the new hospital, which I'm sure the committee will be aware of, is that we moved to a hospital that was 100% single rooms. And that, in the very early days of our planning, required myself and members of the team to have quite significant engagement with our communities around the fact we were moving to 100% single rooms because there was some concern and some anxiety about the fact that patients were, um, some of our population were concerned about loneliness and isolation within the single rooms. But I'm delighted to say that when we had our patient experience week earlier on in the year and we got some feedback from our patients in terms of the use of the single rooms, we had feedback that they really loved the environment, that they felt that it made seeing their family easier. We have an open visiting policy within the new hospital, so family members, friends can attend the hospital at any time, day or night. Um, they felt the hospital wards were calmer as a result of the single rooms and they loved the fact that they had a TV in each of the patient bedrooms. Um, but in, in terms of, in, the, we also did get some feedback though that it wasn't ideal for some of our older patients um, who maybe didn't have family members or friends close by. Um, so we've done a number of things within each of the wards. We've got a socialisation space where when patients are ready, they can access that. And we've also um, used volunteers within the hospital. We're really delighted with the number of volunteers we have in um, Dumfries and Galloway. We've got over 200 volunteers and we've got ward-based volunteers who support people who are maybe isolated and don't have visitors. So, as I say, that there's been lots of developments within the new hospital, lots of advantages, but we do have an ongoing challenge around recruitment. Um, Jeff mentioned it earlier, it is one of our really significant challenges. We'll, we'll, move, on. Okay. we'll move on to address recruitment in okay. a moment. I wonder if you can perhaps simply say something around the financial pressures and the consequences of operating so, old and new hospitals side by side? Yes, we, we'd always intended to leave some ambulatory services at our old sites. So we've left uh, renal dialysis, some therapies and ophthalmology at, at that old site to make the Mountain Hall Treatment Centre. They, those services do not do not need to be on an acute hospital site. So we wanted to create a more... Um, a, a, um, 
a, a setting more suitable for ambulatory care for people to, to walk up and be treated in that. That's, that's moved well. We budgeted for the double running costs of that. Um, what we hadn't, I think, sufficiently appreciated was the scale of uh, additional staffing required in our, in our new hospital. We'd budgeted for an increase of around 80 staff and we recruited to almost all of those posts before moving. But we've since um, recognised that that staffing is itself not optimum and we've moved to, to recruit further staff on, uh, in addition to that this year. So that's um, it's within the, the um, three million pounds of unidentified savings that I've quoted earlier, so it's not putting any additional pressures. And I said, as I said, we would still anticipate a break-even position this year, but it, it has been noticeable the sheer footprint of the hospital, the new ways of working around the front door, and the single rooms issues are probably testing some of the traditional staffing models that we used to, to set our, our um, baseline staffing. And I think that's an issue that our, um, our nurse director, Eddie Doherty, has raised uh, nationally, that we do need to look at tools for single room nursing to make sure that the advice for, for future developments is bang up to date. You've covered already how we, I guess, the, the challenges of dual sites or double sites. Um, how, how do the staff then engage if you're needing dialysis in intensive care, for instance, but you're running regular dialysis at uh, Mountain Hall? Um, we've got dialysis centres uh, across the region, Srinrar, Kirkubri as well. So do those staff manage to float? Do they agree to do that? Is that part of the challenges, is looking at models of working that the that the staff are actually accepting? If I may, uh, I'll, I'll defer to our nephrologist uh, alongside me. Yes, so as a renal physician, I guess I should answer that one. Um, there was, there was a, a lot of planning, I guess, around the, the move towards having the split site working. Um, I guess one way of looking at it is you mentioned we've got satellite units, Stranar, Kukubri, and in some ways the Mountain Hall Centre is a satellite as well, although it does act as a kind of main base. Um, we recognise there would be staffing issues around this because we need to have rotas for nursing staff to be in the acute hospital to deal with your ICU patients and patients on the, on the renal ward, and we need medical staff as well. So there were increases in both numbers, and particularly when we recruited ultimately an extra renal consultant of the staff numbers to make that, that rota workable. Um, like a lot of aspects of moving into new hospital, there's been some teething around just how that works, but I'm pleased to say I think the team are in a good place now. They've got to the point where they, you know, it's a very different way of working than they used to. And, and you know, when you mentioned about how the patients requiring dialysis, if they're in the Mountain Hall Centre, in, when that was the main hospital, getting an x-ray, getting another specialist was all very straightforward. And now that involves sometimes having to move to the new hospital. But we've worked processes around that, and I think it's working really well now. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much.